Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo and in this video I'm going to talk about all Harry Potter games for the Xbox 360. Harry Potter for Kinect is an interesting game. You get to love it and hate it at the same time. Ok, hate is too much, but you get to see that it's not that great of a game. But end up seeing later, oh but the game is good though. The game's campaign is weird. It tells you key moments from all of the 7 movies, but it's knowing that the developers chose subjectively which key moments to feature. This way, for example, in the Three Wizard Cup, out of 3 tasks, you get to play only 2 of them. The gameplay is varied at first, starting with brewing potions, doing some herbology classes, but the game also has repetitive parts, like for example the mini games where you have to jump and dodge. Combat isn't that thrilling after you find out that holding Protego makes you win the match anyway. There are some little inaccuracies in character models here and there, like for example using the character model from the 4th year in the 5th year. The game starts strong, playing the 1st year and half of the 2nd year is a blast, but the more you progress in the game, the more it gets repetitive, or you get annoyed that they skipped parts that were dear to you. For example, in the third year, you don't fly with Buckbeak, and with the story of the books told with lots of skips, the game loses its charm. Sure, the graphics look good, except for Harry's character models from the last part, but graphics alone don't make a game. Many times the game feels sloppy, but overall, it still remains a good game. I had fun, even if at times the controls were annoying, or the mini games repetitive. I, I still had fun. The game would be enjoyable for any Potterhead, and maybe for kids too, though some parts of the game may be a little difficult for them. Maybe, I haven't tested the game on kids yet. But even if Potterheads or kids would enjoy the game, non-Harry Potter fans will most probably not like it. Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix is fantastic. The biggest selling point of the game is the free room. You get a one-to-one -one virtual representation of Hogwarts. Some doors are locked, it's true, you can travel literally everywhere. But the castle is huge, and walking through it makes you realize why Harry and Ron were late in the transfiguration class in the first year. The castle is confusing, but don't worry, you have somewhat of a GPS. If you select a destination on the map, Marauder footsteps will appear on the floor, guiding you to your way to your destination. Ok, now, what do you do in the game? Well, mostly you'll be doing tasks for students. The tasks put the free room to good use, but if you're expecting something exciting, you're wrong. Most tasks are laid back. You have to retrieve stuff, or get stuff, or talk to gargoyles, which is the most annoying task. You are asked to talk to five talking gargoyles. They aren't shown on the map, you have to explore the whole castle in order to talk to them. And this is a problem many people had with the game. It doesn't tell you what exactly you have to do. To pass the game, you'll need to either watch a lot of YouTube walkthroughs or explore the castle till you can't no more. Some people love exploring a lot and figuring stuff for themselves, but others prefer to be told what they have to do. Also, we get a lot of extra stuff to do. Tasks aren't the only thing you, you'll be doing in the game. You also get duels, you get exploding snap, and you can play chess. And there are collectibles on the map. There's a lot of stuff to do in Hogwarts. You also get story parts from the movie. Overall, the game is marvelous. If you are excited by the idea to visit an accurate virtual Hogwarts, then I totally recommend the game. Me, as a Harry Potter fan, I can't tell you if you're going to like it or not, because I like any Harry Potter game. But many non-HP fans have played it and liked it. So my recommendation is to play the game only if you like the idea to free roam around in an accurate representation of Hogwarts. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince follows the same formula as the previous one, but one issue is fixed. The confusing tasks. This time you don't need YouTube walkthroughs and guides anymore to finish the game. What you have to do is more straightforward, 
and that's a big improvement over the other one. Also you get more parts of Hogwarts, for example the previous one didn't have the passage to the Quidditch field behind the Aulery. Also in this game you don't play chess or exploding snap anymore, which were fun. They were cut out and instead have been replaced with three minigames that get repeated a lot to spice things up. You duel with all four houses of Hogwarts, you brew potions from a generous list or you play Quidditch. In duels you can choose from a multitude of spells and blast your way in duels. Some players may not like the duels because they are too easy. They aren't challenging, but sure are fun to play. And the other two are challenging. If you want to have a high rating that is. If you want to get 5 stars in potions or in quidditch, you're going to feel the challenge. But if you're a casual player, don't worry. You can get a low rating and just breeze through everything. Overall, I recommended the game. Even if you're not a Harry Potter fan, I still recommend the game. The game is straightforward, I think you'll enjoy it even if you don't know the context. You get a GPS, which this time is Nick the ghost, to show you around so that you don't get lost in the castle. The game is great, I recommend it to you. Lego Harry Potter years 1 to 4 and Lego Harry Potter years 5 to 7 are amazing. They are the typical Lego formula translated into the Harry Potter story. And it works, or it worked for me at least. You get the entire saga summarized in a funny way and you get to cast spells around Hogwarts. You can explore a Lego version of Hogwarts. The games are marvelous. I like them and I totally recommend you play them. And I've put this one as only half of a game because LEGO Dimensions Fantastic Beasts isn't a Harry Potter standalone game, it's a DLC in LEGO Dimensions. If you want to play the DLC you need to buy the story pack and you also have to buy a toy pad controller to play the game. And when you boot it up you see that the LEGO formula was translated into the Fantastic Beasts story, but this time you can play with other characters too that don't belong to the wizarding world. And that ruins the fun. I mean solving puzzles with Aquaman, Finn the Human or Jake the Dog or seeing Sonic in Fantastic Beasts make it feel less like a wizarding game and more like a modded version of Skyrim. The game is, the game is really fun. LEGO Dimensions is a really great game, but as a Harry Potter experience, well, it feels butchered. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 is a mediocre game. Many people call it a horrible game, and truth is that even I, a big Harry Potter fan, admit that this game is bad. It's the first time in a long streak of amazing games that the Harry Potter game got to a time level. The game is bad, it feels like they just slapped some gameplay elements and didn't test the game beforehand. It's not broken, but I can't imagine a game tester playing this and saying that it's good. The game has clunky controls, casting spells isn't satisfying, the cover button doesn't always respond and it's a chore to switch spells. You have a button to switch spells, and if you want to cast a specific spell, you have to repeatedly press the spell button mid-battle until the selected spell appears, uh, until the spell you want to cast appears. And to summarize the gameplay, you get two types of things to do. You get shooting levels and sneaking levels. And while the shooting levels are just dull, the sneaking levels are terrible. When you get to the first sneaking level in London, you already know that this is going to be annoying. You have to use Harry's cloak to sneak. Your cloak drains when you move near people, or if you bump into people. So you have to stand still so that your cloak recharges. And I don't know who thought that it would be fun to stand in the middle of the road for, to wait for some bar to recharge, but for me, a player on the internet who makes reviews, it wasn't fun. Also the level designs are confusing. 
you get a GPS spell that shows you the way, but it doesn't always show you the way well. Also the storytelling is terrible too. You are jumping into missions without getting any context. Why am I in a cave with a dragon? How did Harry get here? Where's Ron and Hermione? And this goes on throughout the whole game. Sure you can watch the movie or read the book to find out about the story. But since you don't understand the story that well by just playing the game, it means that the storytelling is bad. Also there are portions where you can't run in the game, you can just walk. You also get some bad camera angles, also there isn't an option to turn on the subtitles. And there are more complaints, but I'm not getting into more of them. Overall, the game is repetitive with its two gameplay types, boring battles and annoying cloak levels. I enjoyed the game as bad as it was because I'm a big Harry Potter fan, but I admit that it's objectively a bad game and I don't recommend anyone to play it. But at least Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 is better. The first one is terrible, but this one is brief and to the point. The first one took you around 5 hours to finish. This one takes you around 3 to 4. I know, it's a crime to pay full price for a game and play only 3 hours. I've told you that the game was terrible. Well, from the two bad games, the second one is better. It doesn't have the annoying cloak levels and the combat has been tweaked. You still shoot your way through enemies, but in my opinion the combat in the second one feels better. And shooting your way like this is everything you do in the game. For 4 hours. I know, it sounds repetitive and it is, but believe me, after playing the first one, that in theory was more varied, I realized that a repetitive game, but with a solid gameplay, is way better than a varied game with bad gameplay. I know, it's obvious, but I wanted to express that idea. Ok, so all you do is shoot. And the shooting is ok. The game still is mediocre, but better than Deathly Hallows Part 1. I don't recommend you play this game either, unless you're a hardcore HP fan that will devour any form of Harry Potter media. I recommend you to stick only to the Harry Potter games that have free room. Those are great. This ones where you only shoot are bad. And not because you don't get free room anymore, but because they are poorly executed. You have to understand the A. The source material wasn't generous. It's hard to make a tie-in game for that part of the Harry Potter saga. But even if they have an excuse for not having free room, they have no excuse for a game with clunky controls, bad level designs, poor optimization and other small annoyances that all add up for a bad or at least mediocre experience. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.